Coming up on today's show. So in a nutshell, it's 70 billion trillion. Guys, it's only February, but it feels like we've already lived through two 2018s. We've had party dramas. <laughs> A lot of commissions. There's under commission of inquiry. The commission of inquiry. The horror inquiry. Sorry, 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 I'm sorry. The State of the Nation address. You watch the space. And the budget speech. But don't worry, we're here to help you make sense of it all. Just hit that subscribe button and notification bell to never miss a video. Of course, you might be thinking, why should I care? It's just politics. <laughs> Well, I'm guessing y'all like electricity. Electricity, ESCOM, ESCOM, power sector, ESCOM, ESCOM. A year after all of this, should Mzanzi still buy the whole Ramaphoria thing, or has it turned into a bad case of Ramaphobia? We took a look at President Ramaphosa's promises and Titombo Weni's budget speech. The green thing. Make this thing legal. Titombo Weni, shut, shut. Let's get away. In many countries around the world, the head of state usually gives a status update once a year on how their country is doing. In democratic South Africa, we've had 30 State of the Nation addresses in 25 years. But Ramaphosa's 2019 Sona has the record of being one of the longest ever at a whopping 8,700 words. And some people felt it more than others. But there's nothing like some national blackouts to jolt you awake when you're the president. Watershed, it comes as quite a shock. It just shocked me. Just a few days after Sona, South Africa was gripped by a stage four load shedding right after Ramaphosa promised us he wants to break up ESCOM into three separate companies. Generation, transmission, and distribution. This is the seventh Sona where a president has wanted to make structural reforms in the electricity sector. It speaks about the reform of ESCOM. We raised this issue 10 years ago. Seventh time lucky? And in the budget speech, our Minister of Finance, AKA Kigali's unofficial tourism rep said, We are setting aside 23 billion rand a year to financially support ESCOM during its reconfiguration. We spoke to an expert to help us unpack what all of this means. I must give credit firstly to Tito Bawene. He asked the question, firstly, do we need these SOEs? This is something that was never addressed in the past. While we are bearing the pinch of having to rescue ESCOM, it's a societal good that they're providing, which is energy. But what's important is that there needs to be a degree of good governance and accountability. And talking of load shedding, how do you do your homework on your tablet without power or Wi-Fi? We will provide every child in school with digital workbooks and textbooks on a tablet device. We've all heard of the stories of how criminals have targeted a pilot school with tablets a month ago. We have asbestos building, terrible teaching, and 4,000 schools don't have adequate sanitation. And the president thought, tablets. Can I get a panado in here? But Dito Mboweni's budget speech was good news for fixing our education crisis. Back to today's budget and the biggest winner, education. Government will spend 111.2 billion rand to ensure that 2.8 million deserving students from poor and working class backgrounds obtain their qualifications. Inclusive access to education can be a game changer for those who leverage it right. Our younger generation that's coming up that were part of the fees must fall have now been given a solution. There was also significant increase in foreign direct investment last year. I love it when you talk foreign. There was an inflow of 70 billion rand. But why do we care about foreign money? Don't take it from me. Vimal Ranchard, an expert on labor at UCT says, quote, if people are not willing to invest in a country, it is almost impossible to generate new jobs. I agree because jobs don't just come spring out from somewhere. It's a function of companies growing and attracting more interest from other foreign markets to create demand for our goods and services. And jobs matter because South Africa has made headlines for having the highest youth unemployment rate in the world. And if you guys don't have jobs, then you can't buy data to watch our show, which is a major problem. Hashtag data costs must fall. To help solve the jobs crisis, last year Ramaphosa promised us the Youth Employment Service. Which will place unemployed youth in paid internships in companies across the economy. The YES initiative launched just under a year ago to create a million jobs for young people in three years, but has only secured about 6,000 work experiences. So, at the current rate, in three years' time, Ramaphosa will only be short 
979,183 jobs. So, has the yes been a success? Uh, no. Thank you. Ramaphosa's plans for the next year aren't cheap. In this coming year, we expect revenues to be about 1.58 trillion rand. And spending is going to be slightly higher. Put another way, we are borrowing about 1.2 billion rand every day. Our budget deficit still remains increasingly very high, but there was also a talk at great lengths around reducing government expenditure. So in a nutshell, it was a very pragmatic and manageable target. The 8th of May 2019 as the date of the election. With elections less than three months away, Ramaphosa tried most of all to sell us a good news story about the ANC and South Africa working together. Let us continue to embrace the spirit of Tumamina. I really am an optimist of where the country is progressing. Voting for one can be a good step in the right direction and also creating advocacy around the South Africa we want as young people. Good governance is also going to be a key issue around how do we create that investor confidence in terms of South Africa's going from good to great. And investigating directorate dealing with serious corruption will see the imposition of harsher penalties. He says he's doing that because he wants to fight corruption. He will have to arrest half the cabinet. The National School of Government is introducing a suite of compulsory courses covering ethics and anti-corruption. We will... Mm, Zanz, kushubil. <sighs> we think ESCOM is going to be one of those isi piti piti situations. And we'll tell you why in our next episode. Meanwhile, drop us a comment and subscribe. Are you guys still feeling the Ramaphoria? Until next time, stay woke, stay awake.